Welcome, uh, welcome to Cycling Central, and we're coming to you from Bunanyong. If you've just joined us, well, you've missed out on one of the most dramatic races in the history of the uh, Cycling Australia National Road Championships. We're with the winner. We're with the 2012 Australian Road Racing Champion, Simon Gerrans. Welcome. Congratulations. How does it feel? Uh, it's fantastic. Thanks, Tomo. Yeah, I'm so, so thrilled to be uh, crowned Australian champion for... 2012 and I couldn't think of a better way to start off the season. It was a terrific race, a class field, it had everything, uh, Cameron Meyer blowing uh, blowing up perhaps but after blasting away and for you to come through with the likes of uh, Matt Lloyd and uh, Richie Port, it was an all-star an all-star all field, uh, was there any moments in the race where you were concerned, tell us about that. Oh definitely, uh, with Green Edge we had 16 riders on the start line so our day was all about uh, dominating with numbers and just trying to have as many guys up the road as possible. Um, so uh, we actually thought we had it wrapped up with Cam Meyer there when he had sort of three minutes with four laps to go. Um, but then he sort of ran into some trouble and uh, the race was back on even playing field. Uh, I think we had four, four yeah, maybe really five episode. riders left in the front. Um, Sky had uh, four. Um, Genesis had a, had a few as well. So I was really back uh, on a level playing field. We lost our advantage with numbers. So uh, at that point in the race, I was a little bit concerned. Well, Dave McKenzie's with us. And uh, Dave, uh, we saw something special. Uh, what do you make of it all? Oh, look, you said it. it. To me, it was one of the best. It was the best national title that I've uh, witnessed. Just here, Simon, two kilometres to go. You were looking over your shoulder. Did you know it was Richie Port? Um, at that point in the race, actually, from the top of the climb, I thought it might have been Chris Sutton coming across. Uh, Richie had done a heck of a lot of work on the climb, so uh, I thought he might uh, have really peeled at the top and left it up to Chris Sutton. Um, but then uh, it was only with about 500 metres to go, I realised it was Richie when he caught back up to us again. So uh, I was a little bit uh, less concerned about uh, a sprint finish with uh, the likes of Richie Port and, and Matt Lloyd rather than uh, a CJ. You still got to be careful though, don't you? Because if, if Port had got on across the top of the climb, then you've potentially got Lloyd and Port attacking you, knowing that Green Edge have got the numbers. So, I mean, even here, were you, were you super confident with what, less than a kilometre to go? You know, if you lead Lloyd out too far out or if Port gets on, what, what's going through the mind then? Um, once I got within a K to go and I knew I was going to be in the front, I was pretty confident that I could finish it off with a, with a sprint. Um, but it was only really to that point that I was uh, confident that I could finish the race off. Uh, it was such a, such a tough race. Um, we really drilled on the climb every single lap for the, for the whole 16 laps. So I was really feeling the fatigue of the race uh, on the last lap. Matt Lloyd, he's great to see him back, almost at his best. Um, I thought, gee, if anyone can get away on the climb, it's him. You had his measure though today. Was there any point where you thought, gee, Lloyd, he's, Lloyd, he's got the goods? Um, he was looking really strong on the climb as well as Richie Port, so they were two guys that I was really keeping a close eye on each lap on the climb. Um, but it is a short climb, it is pretty explosive. Uh, if it had another kilometre or two attached to it, um, uh, the likes of uh, Richie and Lloydie would probably have me in a little bit more trouble, but uh, that's, that sort of climb suits me fairly well. How does this feel? Take us through this. Is, is this the best feeling or what? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't get much better than this to... Uh, to uh, Raise your hands in the air and cross the line first in our national title. Um, yeah, it's a huge thrill. You know, there's a lot of talk that there, there may have been some uh, red faces at Green Edge not come home victorious, given the uh, weight in numbers that the team had. Uh, had that crossed the mind of uh, riders such as yourself? Um, yeah, like I said, with a couple of laps to go there, when uh, it was back to an even playing field, we had similar numbers to a lot of the other strong teams. I thought uh, we've really lost our advantage here. So. Uh, um, the pressure really built at that point uh, that we didn't want to we didn't want to screw it up and uh, and uh, so yeah that that made the win even more sweet. So I mean, we're really looking forward to the year ahead. But tell us about the bonded Green Edge and uh, the reasons why you came to this team and uh, what plans you have for the future. I mean, surely you must be there at the Tour de France this year wearing this jersey. Um, yeah, obviously Tour de France is a huge goal um, of mine to be back there and. Uh, and uh, representing Green Edge and representing Australia as, as the national champion, uh, it would be, uh, be a huge honour to be at the Tour de France with the green and gold. Um, my big focus for the year is, um, well, obviously I wanted to start the season in good shape and it's, it's gone perfectly so far. Uh, then the uh, Ardennes Classics is a big goal of mine, following that the, the Tour de France and the Olympic Games. And then there's some fantastic races leading right up to the World Championships at the end of the year. You're going to be a busy man, aren't you? Oh, it's an exciting season, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. But the spirit and the bond within the team, tell us about that. Uh, look, we're, there's um, 17 Aussies on Green Edge and uh, we're all great mates. And also 13 foreigners, uh, 
that we've spent some time with uh, throughout November and December are all a great group of guys. So um, we're going to have a, a really close-knit close, close -knit team and I think uh, that brings the best out in guys as well. When you know you're racing there with your mates, um, you tend to find that little bit extra on the road. Stuart O'Grady, how good, how good has he been already and how good was he today? Was he, was he the one calling the shots? Was he the general? Because I, I, I had him as a second pick. Uh, you know, if, if you couldn't do it today, I thought, well, Stewie's there. What, what sort of impact does he have? Because he's really one of the most experienced guys in the peloton, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Stewie, he's been around forever. Um, and uh, he's such a, such a smart road captain, and he's fantastic at calling the shots uh, throughout the race. So he was really leading the way for us there today. He was raced a really aggressive race. He was continuously in the front, continuously attacking. And uh, like I said, really using the numbers that we had in the in the field to to our advantage all right Simon, we, uh, we have to wrap it up there but uh, we congratulate you uh, we're going to be looking forward to the year ahead you got the gold medal the green and gold jersey we've followed your career for so long here on sps and we're not going to stop now okay great Thanks <laughs> we're not so going to stop now it's going to be a tremendous year well done thank you so much and congratulations don't go away we're going to take a break and we'll be right back here on cycling central